Hi everyone, welcome to Shibumi Boat Build, our YouTube channel on the building and eventual launch of this wonderful boat, Shibumi, who's been sitting here for years and now under current restoration and the continuing of the build of the actual boat. So last week you saw the start of the closing off of the floors to the actual uh, cockpit floor up, up top from the engine room and ceiling along that. So I've actually finished the last one of those, I'll give you a quick look. And I'm now about to put down the first of the frames for the fuel tanks, which I will show you now. Just let me turn the camera. And here we go. So uh, above there, I need my glasses now to see the viewfinder. So that's the last plate. I had three done on the last episode. And uh, we now have, I'll just move that stuff out of the way there. So this is a weird one because as you can see, it goes from actually tilting down to tilting the other way. And the wonder of a uh, metal sheet, you can push it as you want. So it's lovely and level. So the whole floor line is now sealed against the engine room. So I'll just put this back here and move these. So the uh, start, there's lots of clamps here and levels and all kinds of things in here currently. And I'm about to tack these big girders here are level to the boat. So if I just, I'm just stepping the edge of the front of the fuel tank holder to the beam. I'm just going to put a couple of tacks there because this beam here, at the, or the rib here back here, which is uh, frame five, uh, is at a much lesser angle than frame six. And it's as we start to curve in towards the front of the boat where it gets narrower and uh, the angle increases. So as you can see there, it's actually stepped up off it there. Now I'll have to get that level where it's actually meeting on this one. So I'll put a little piece in here into the floor up on that uh, flat piece there. Uh, I'll be able to attach it to this uh, angle iron that's running up the inside of the bulkhead and of course down here on the floor. And then I'll get this one and I'll put in a stepped piece there, a small piece and a bigger piece there and a piece in the middle and a bit down there. And once that's all fully welded up then uh, the tank will test fit the tank. So I'm going to just tack that up and try and get those bits in today and then test fit the tank. I'll have to get Dara or someone to help me with the uh, chain blocks and we'll just lower in the tank and have a look. So there it is roughly tacked in now. Uh, we have a nice straight line. Remember they all bowed when I welded them together so I knew I'd have to pull them and push them so I actually had to give that a little lift there just to get it flush. The top edge of my running level with the way the boat is level, she's currently nose up at the moment. For some reason she shifted again from all the painting with opening and closing the stands that the boat are standing on. So I'm actually ready now. There's enough weld on them just to hold it. Uh, to uh, a little tack there as well. And just a few across the bottom there, just one or two. Uh, to actually lower the tank in and test it on a bit of cardboard because remember there's going to be foam uh, rubber in there, uh, squeezy rubber in there to keep them quiet and give them a good seating and uh, I'm going to drop the tanks in now once I get a bit of help with the chain block. So a small bit of struggling, it all fitted obviously because we had tested them already to it and there is a little bit of space there on, uh, I'll just zoom in here, at the very back there. 
Now we're sitting on uh, little tiny bits of 6 mil of plywood which will replicate the rubber that these tanks will actually sit on just to keep them all quiet. And you can see we literally have uh, left no space. So I've shoved them forward in the engine room on purpose. So the two of them are going to be, they used to be practically all there. Remember these are the replacement tanks, they're slightly shorter. Uh, so the hydraulic system is going in there, in that bay. And on the other side over here, we'll have the exhaust going out onto the floor and then the califier will begin over that. Uh, that'll use up the space there. The generator is going to sit in the middle, in one of the walkways. So now that we've a test fit and we know it works, uh, a bit awkward pulling it off the, just the, the wrong place in the roof, but we'll sort that. So I'm actually going to raise them back up now and finish out welding that in and then I can start working on the hydraulic bracketry which I've pre-made and just to mount them in and we'll hopefully get the hydraulic pack offered in there temporary and then we'll see how we're going so obviously you can see the whole lot all needs to be dusted down and obviously repainted so we'll do all that too. So I have a little leg gun in there and that's welded down both sides that's fully welded in underneath and that's a big Bracket there gone in, you can barely see it, it's kind of getting dark here now. It's welded across the front there as well, a couple of tabs along the way. And of course it's got a little purchase onto the, the beam there. So the tank now is, we've tested it, it does fit obviously. So this is the hydraulic tank. Pause. Take two. So there's the hydraulic tank ready to, uh, I need to make it uh, bracketry. So uh, prepped up a bit of a... Uh, 50 mil angle, heavy stuff, and I figured out how I'm going to mount it and the spacing to keep it level with the angle of the boat. It's, I need to put 65 mil underneath the bottom section of it there. So uh, the the tank has got uh, just underneath here uh, four of them uh, 10 mil threaded inserts coming up into the tank up in here. So because these are also threaded, I'm going to drill them out so that the nut can go up with a washer and get bolted from the inside with a big stainless washer on the inside and a locking washer as well and mount them up and then mount this down onto the angle so they'll go this way now the if you think of the way it's going to mount sideways in the gap that i've left i have to kind of move around here because i have a little compressor in my way i'm sure i can push that out of the way so i've seen I knew exactly what way I was going to mount this. So the wiring is all going in on this side here. So that's into all the different servos. Uh, uh, solenoids, not servos, excuse me. So you can see there, I think I've shown this already, the lights come on, bow thruster, stern thruster, the wind glass, and also the mass, they call it mass lowering, but it's actually for the radar arch. And this is load sensing here, and that's the, to enable the system there, which means that the, the clutch will kick in and out on the actual engine. So essentially this will be the outside of the boat. This side here will be the back bulkhead nearest the aft cabin. And the piping then, which will come from here, over here, that's the high pressure going in. This is the return from the pump to feed the pump. So that's to the pump. Uh, lots of uh, fluid, you can see the size of the pipe there. That's just an ordinary hose. And then the high pressure line coming back in is back in over here. So I can route this in and come in this way into it. And then all of these then will go off uh, to, to this bow, the, the bow thruster and the wind glass. And then that's to the stern. That can go up out through the roof of the bulkhead or the engine room. And then also the same, these can go up the walls to meet the radar arch. So I have one little problem and I've found a solution for it is that while the back of the tank here, this is now going to be the back, so it's technically the wrong way around, um, has a, a nice little, it's a very analog uh, temperature uh, thermometer. So that's mounted into the tank and it's mounted on, I've actually opened it, it's mounted through so that the plate of it is touching the tank and it's to monitor just the temperature. So what I'm actually going to do is I've just undone all of the bolts on the top of this and I'm going to rotate the tank so this will stay in the right orientation and rotate this. So this is now where I want it on the outside and this is now up against the bulkhead wall within a, a couple of inches of it. 
and it just means that this won't be buried in where it can't be read. There is also a drain plug here for draining it. So this is the side I want. So basically this tank over here will become the back of it, which will be up against the wall. There's nothing on that. So that's going to do no damage. There's nothing on the sides and uh, the whole thing will just work a whole lot better for me. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to start making up the bracketry. So I have the tank uh, split and I have it upside down and uh, these are the holes here. I'm just going to point at them then I'm going to mount those little rubber devices into so I'm going to drill those. Uh, interestingly uh, this uh, is quite serious on the inside. We never actually looked into it but look at all the pipes that are inside in it. And a beautiful piece of work. So uh, it is uh, uni sex we really call it. It can go both ways. It really isn't going to cost us at all. So we can turn it within the tank and uh, so now I'll go and drill these over here. So I've done a little drawing on CAD just to uh, get the exact dimensions for the uh, hydraulic tank and I've started to make a bracket. I've, do I've done some of the cutting first so I'll just switch the camera around so that you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to tack it up here in the workshop with the big welder but I've only one bottle of gas so I'll actually finish it out then on the boat itself uh, with because I have the, the other gas. I'm actually using deer gas here, pure argon, and it makes no sense to waste the gas. So this is our uh, hydraulic bracket. Uh, the centres of these have to be uh, very specific, 2, 8, 2.5 millimetres apart. So I'll drill those out later. Uh, I'm going to file down this height here for 20 mil, where it'll actually sit up on the step uh, between the floor and the walls uh, on the chine. And uh, then weld this and then uh, here for the height, because I do need a height, I need 65 from the bottom of that to there. So I'll incorporate a small piece of 40 mil angle and uh, you'll see all that happening now and I'll tack it up. So I did uh, end up welding it all completely the whole way around. I finished all the bits that will be seen. Beautiful ends there. So I'm very happy with that. I also brought in these bits so that they're in line with the bottom. This is only 40, this is 50. I stepped inside. And this is going to sit up on the chine of the boat and just get welded here and a bit across the back. And uh, so I'm actually going to bring it over now and set my height which would be here because this is stepped. It should be 65 from there down, but just for bringing all the calipers. And I'll get a height with a, a level and I'll make sure I have my right figures and then I'll come back and cut the pieces, put them in and shape them. And then we're ready to weld it into the boat. So I've finished out making the legs now that it's gonna stand on to, to offset the height in the, from the side of the boat into one of the center beams. I've drilled all the holes, they're only just slended in there. They're not bolted down, but as you can see, they all line up perfectly. So I've kept it further in towards the side of the boat. So essentially, you can see my hand there. 
side of the boat, the actual side of the boat, including insulation, will be around there, and around there roughly. So it just gives me more space on this side. I can always mount other bits and pieces here if I need to. Uh, anything else to do with the uh, control side of the hydraulics can live on a little box there. There's going to be junction boxes and whatnot. So I can put a little bracket there and put all the junctions there and that'll be looking out into the actual centre of the boat will be that way. So it'll all work out perfect. So I have my drain plug here on the front now instead of at the back and I have my temperature and uh, so inside of the tank is spotless. I'll give it a quick wipe before I close it all back up and uh, get it into the boat but I don't think I'll need to test fit it. I have it marked on the floor where it's going to live. Uh, very happy with it, it's fully level and uh, I'll weld that in now shortly. So there's the hydraulic pack or the hydraulic tank uh, bracketing fully welded in all around. Very happy with it, it's completely level with the boat and uh, away from the bulkhead wall as well as the back and the side so everything is fine. I'm not going to test fit it because I've already fitted it over as you've seen and I know for a fact it's all going to just fit perfectly. It's exactly where I want it. It gives me as much room still clear in the walkway here. So the next thing I'm going to do now that I've that done is move across into the middle of the boat and uh, similarly two lengths of angle iron will cross the length of the way the yellow level is there but down inside it but just enough height above the actual shaft stern tube uh, to allow the little white cap on the roof of that it needs to have an angled uh, water connection 10 millimeters thick so that's going to feed the water down into it now rather than go directly above it which i would have shown in a couple of uh, videos back that there's a whole arrangement and a breather i'm going to remotely mount that on this side because in here as low as i can is going to be the exhaust muffler which I showed you before and that's going to sit really as low as I can to get the angle off the uh, manifold of the exhaust down in a curve down into the, the muffler and then the top part of it then shoots it out and into that corner over there uh, through the back wall on that new uh, pipe that I've got and then out through the back of the boat. So I'm just going to take some measurements here and then I'm going to make another set of plates just like I did on the other one and then weld them, grind away the paint in there and fully weld them in, in place and that's going to carry the muffler and on this side, for say from the between the shaft and this side of the boat here, I will have uh, bracketry then that I can also put other devices or whatever I need. So basically it's all going to get very full. We know of course the big uh, universal joint is sitting there in the big bearing. So it's going to be busy enough in there but still have plenty of room to get it at things and sort things out uh, under it. And worst we'll ever have to do is just remove the muffler, four bolts, spin off the hoses and then just move it to one side and we have full access to it other than the fact that there'll be just two bits of angle iron water across the head of it. So I've had to do a little drawing there showing the, uh, the actual rubber mounts and the distances along the two angles which I've now cut. Now recycled, they used to be uh, meat racks for lighting equipment years ago. I uh, have these working here. Believe it or not, uh, they have every drawing and every dimension on the Vetus website. And they show all the ins and outs on it. And I've actually gone in and looked at the manual because I have everything. And they don't actually give the spacing of the holes. They give the hole, all the dimensions, everything. But they don't actually give the spacing. So anyway, we've that worked out since and uh, happy with that. So I'm ready to start making these. I've got to put in two spacers of 40 by 50. And uh, there's the dimension there, 260 millimeters edge to edge on the inside. I'm going to weld those up, square it off, and then mark out and drill all these holes. And uh, then I should be able to offer it into the boat and get a level on it and get some lines. And hopefully weld it down. So I'll see how we get on, as usual. So I'm just about to tack this up now. That's only a spacer on the outside keeping it in 40 so that's the four holes on each side to mount it. The centres of them are 310 as it should be for the thingy and I'm just going to weld this in now.
So there it is, that's the bracket, I'll weld it in tomorrow. I think I'm enough done for today with one bracket made already. This is absolutely perfect. And uh, I still have access down into the shaft underneath this side. That we just about come to the halfway mark, which means the shaft is running literally around here. But remember, it's going to be below it, so I'll be able to get in at it. And I have space here to put other bits and pieces when I need to. Now, the head of that, so this is going to go from this up to the uh, exhaust, which is somewhere up around here, and we come down into a little curve. And then this will get pointed towards here and come out. Uh, after all, we'll rotate that yet, but we'll do that when I'm fitting it. And there's our uh, exhaust muffler bracket made now, just to line it up and weld it in tomorrow. So I've cleaned away everything that I needed to, and uh, I've decided, I looked at the angle of this, I now have a clear sight. I've brought it, I've raised it by 40 millimeters. Now it's still lower than I ever thought I'd have it. I thought I'd have it about here, but I actually have it here at almost, uh, 18 centimeters, which I have all around. Uh, I'm good this way. So it's level at the boat. Now the boat isn't level. She's she's uh, high on that side. So the bubble should be more towards that way. So in effect, this needs to. So that's it, now I have plenty of space above that, I have clearance here, I'm parallel here, parallel on the sides, I'm level with the boat, currently the way the boat is level, so whatever way level is you have to set everything the same, so then when the boat is level everything else comes back in line. So uh, that I'm going to just test the muffler sitting on top of that uh, in a few minutes and then once I'm happy with all that then I'll weld in all four sides. Now I've been thinking since, I use these straps here purely for construction, to keep these parallel and to keep them in line with where I want them to be. But once they're in, once they're in and fully welded, there's no reason why I can't take these out and it's literally just a cut and a cut each side and tidy them up and it just gives me back the freedom to get able to get into things again. So uh, I think that's what I will do, is take these out once they're unhappy with them. In hindsight, I suppose I could have just tacked something very simple, simple on them instead of going for a fun finish, but I can take them back out and no one will ever know they were ever there. That's just a test fit there. That top part has to be turned obviously towards the side. That's just uh, an adjustment. And I have full clearance on the top of the stern gland. So I have total space there. I'm going to put something else in this area here when I need to. And the centre bearing has tons of room around it. The flexible coupling. So the shaft will come up there, it doesn't meet that angle iron, it's well above it. So uh, I'm happy with that. It's going to be a tight enough bend to come out of the side of the engine there. You can't see it, it's actually exposed it slightly. It's just. Where is it? <laughs> so it's coming out of there on that and then down I'll just rotate the camera so it's there and it'll come to there it's just going to be a little curve like that I'll try and keep them as steep an angle as I can here and then flatten it out so it might the exhaust hose might need a little bracket to keep it in place to keep the curve the way I want it uh, which I can make there's no problem there I don't have any holes yet so we're a while away from that <laughs> 